Hey, hello, what's up, folks? Today is first of January, twenty twenty-one. We are back with New Year, New Day, New Challenge. Today we are going to check if an array can be formed through contact concatenation. I'm so sorry for that. Yeah, and uh, what this question contains is we are given an array of integers, for example, and the value of uh, the elements in that array is less than hundred. So there could be a ninety-nine, a ninety, a hundred, or one, two, any number in that array. And we are given another two-dimensional array, array of arrays, in which we are given few arrays. Uh, for example, uh, let's take this example. So uh, the array given to us is fifteen comma eight eighty eight, and pieces contains two array. One array contains eighty eight. Second array contains fifty. So we need to check if we can somehow manipulate uh, this piece arrays in such a way that we can form this array. So take fifteen from here and take eighty eight from here, and you'll have this array. But there's a slight issue. We can't change the order of integers inside each of the array. So this array has only one integer. So there's no point consider considering this array. Let's consider this array. So uh, clearly it can be formed because we have a 91, we have a 78, we have a 4, we have a 6, like we wanted. But what if uh, this was 64 followed by 4? Uh, the 64 came first and 4 came later. Then the slight issue, because then uh, this can't be formed because we can't change the order of four and sixty-four because these are the element inside the array. So how would we do that? The first basic approach that after seeing the constraint that comes to someone's mind is make a map of let's take a integer of hundred uh, size length hundred. Uh, inc uh, while traversing through our own array, increment everything in that array. So if it contains a one, a two, a three, increment it. And so on, again, and um, uh, while traversing through pieces of array, do the same thing for each array inside it. So, for example, here what would happen is, uh, while traversing here, fifteen would be converted from zero to one, and eighty-eight would be converted from zero to one in that map array, and then while traversing this, eighty-eight would be zero, and fifteen would be zero, but. That is fine approach. I mean, we can solve few test cases using that approach. But there's a slight problem. The problem is number of elements and all the elements can be same exactly, like this one. But the positions can be different. So it is forty nine, eighteen, and sixteen. But here it is sixteen, eighteen, and forty nine. So there's a difference in that position. So we can't. Rely on this. So what we need to do is, first we need a map. Uh, it is clear. I mean, there there can be solutions where this can be done without a map, but for my solution, I have taken a map, and we'll understand my solution through this example. So what I did is, while traversing through my array, I inserted each and every element in uh, while traversing through my array. Of pieces, what I did is I inserted the head of each and every array in the map. For example, this seven seven my map uh, looks like uh, there. So, what my pieces is? Let me just copy paste here that test case so it would be easy to explain. Copy paste now. So what my map contains? This is the view inside my map. So it has seventy-eight, comma zero. Then the next, oh wait, yeah, there. Then the next line of my map contains uh, four, comma one. And then the next line of my map contains. It's better if I do this here. Done. Yeah, this is my first key, and another key contains it is ninety one comma two. Now, while traversing through my array, what I check is if the key is present or not. For example, if ninety one is present here, I'm good. If ninety one is present here, I check for two. 
I I mean I get the value two. Then what I do is I go at the second index in this pieces array, and then I check for what is the size of this array. So if the size is greater than one, then what I do is I traverse. I start traversing. So if it is greater than one, then I for sure know that the next element contained in this array should be four. If it is anything but four, my uh, I won't be able to form this array. using this so i check if this is equal to this let's again from the start let's just take this example i checked for two i checked for the length and while the length is not equal to my, while my integer is not equal to the length i traversed and i check if there is the next element is its next element or not then again then i went on this four then i checked for if four is present or not of course four was present i went to four and then i checked if the size is greater than 1 of course it was greater than 1 in this case then i checked if the next element is of this particular array and this array is equal or not if they are not equal it's i have to return false if there are the, if there are equal i can go on then after that what i do is i don't check for 64 because now i know that i have already checked for 64 so i increment my i here and then i go to 78 i check for 78 and same thing happens so here is the code but let us rewrite the code so we could maybe understand it better let's start by creating a hash map of integer comma integer and with that we'll name it a map it would be a new hash map let's move ahead now after creating the hash map what we need to do is we need to fill that hash map first so what i do is i start a loop for i equals to 0 i less than a uh, pieces dot length because i is the i denotes the number of arrays in that pieces array yeah and we have to look at this pieces array as a 2d array so it has uh, it is a 2d array with different rows and each row present a different array that it contains again i plus plus now what i do is i uh put the value of pieces of i of 0 so what does what does this is if you have any confusion understanding this let's take that example it was 78 next line it was 4 comma 64 next line it was 91 now uh, what happens is this is uh, we can easily consider this a 2d array of irregular form yeah so this is a 0 this is 1 this is a 2 let's move here this is a 0 and this is a 1 now now it would be much easier to understand this so what i do is in pieces array at position 0 matlab i here my i is 0 so i am at position 0 and i want the first value so i have entered 78 here and what i what else do i want here is the value of i because now i know that array which starts with 78 which contains 78 as its first element is stored at this 0 that's all what i do here is and then after i have done this i start my another loop in that while loop what i check for is uh, my arrays uh, i should be less than my arrays length to begin to begin with then what i need is i need a num to store the f uh, the current element of my array in it so it would be array of i there exact now what i need is i need to check if my map dot contains this key or not and the key is num if it does or not okay and i'll do certain things if it does else return false simple done 
now what i do if it contains i have to check if the next element if the array size of array is greater than 1 then the next el all the uh, the sequence sh should match so this is what i am doing if it has then i'll row index i'll create a new variable called row index which i need and that index would be equal to my uh, map dot get and i need to get the value at my num so it would give me a row index then i need a length so the value the length of the particular array which i am going to pick from the array pieces array from arrays of array called pieces yeah that's better now how do i do that is i write pieces dot pieces of row so now my row is at a particular row dot length so what okay i have removed the example but yeah so what this does is quite clear now what i do is i start another loop so while j equals to 0 and uh, while j is less than this uh, len i check if my array's next element or the current element let's start with the current element is not equal to this new arrays which is stored in this rows jth element if it is not equal to that we know we need to return false if it is equal to that what we want to do is we need to increment the i and the j the i and the j would be incremented now Uh, what we want to do is if everything goes as planned and nothing happens at the end of the day we can return a true and we need to do this i need a custom test case let's take this how was the test case fed in there i'm so sorry i don't remember let's just try this this followed by the pieces comma yeah this i hope this runs fine oh i used the word row instead of row index that's it and they also index looks good to me and i have misspelled pieces i hope there was the only mistake i made and the answer is false and let's just submit the code and hope it gets accepted and that was it for this video guys i hope you were able to understand the solution of this code thank you so much